Okay, so I have a bunch of freezer paper here and some paints in random colors. And I'm just about to send off an original painting. Um, and I always like to wrap it in freezer paper. I'll show you why in a second, but I'm gonna take off a big hunk of the freezer paper and cut it. that and I'm going to cut this edge to just to make it even. All right. So when I am wrapping original art, I love using freezer paper because while this is the papery side, this side is the shiny side. This is the side that won't stick to your artwork. So it won't stick to your paint, it won't stick to the vine, the uh, varnish that's on there. So it's really great. When I'm wrapping an art piece, I, I use freezer paper a lot as that base layer that goes against the painting. So this is the layer, the shiny part that I'm gonna leave plain. But then I have this big white canvas, essentially. And it's kind of boring, right? We wanna put some color on there. And I don't want to create a new painting for this necessarily. I mean, I could, I could sketch on here and do all kinds of things, but I was just thinking of doing a little bit of just kind of crazy mixed media um, marks and lines, cause that's what I like doing. I've got this selection of paint. So I'm going to put these on here and I chose these because it's a nice selection of bright and dark um, black is always a nice color to balance out bright colors like this. And I'm just going to do some graffiti type of work on here. So I'm going to squeeze this stuff out on here and we can get to painting. And I'm just putting random amounts on here. This is a great way to use up if you have like leftover paint or if you've got craft paint. I mean, craft, you don't need to use your acrylic paints. You can use craft paints. Um, craft paints are very often acrylic, but they're a lesser expensive type of acrylic paint. Ooh, <laughs> the end of that tube. Let's see what else I can squeeze out. Yeah, I'm at the end. So that's a good way to use that up. And I've got this bright yellow that I bought that I don't really use for anything. I thought it would be good for this. So first thing I love is bubble wrap. And this is just from a Amazon Prime package. The inside of it I always save because it's got really nice kind of like raised surface and I like that. So I'm going to put a little bit on there and I'm just going to randomly, because this is graffiti, this isn't anything perfect. I'm kind of randomly getting a couple uses of this on here. And I'm just going through the whole thing. And I'm spreading it out so that it's evenly distributed as far as color and the marks. And so I'm not trying to fill up the whole thing. I just want to make sure though that, that I get every kind of balance that I can have. Because even with something like this, we want to make sure we have color that's distributed properly. You can see I'm being really not fussy with how it comes off, with the type of marks. That squeaking you hear is my dogs there <laughs> fighting over a toy right now, which is fun. So I've got that um, bubble wrap you can very often use many times, but I find that these package type of things get really flat easily. And I only use them for one, one application. So... I am going to, you know, now that I've got this, um, it's still a mixed media project in that I don't want to make mud. I don't want to mix up, you know, like a color that's going to make this muddy. I want these to be clear, crisp layers. So I'm going to do something where I don't interfere with the paint too much, which is doing some dots, like just some splatters. And I think I'm going to use this beautiful blue. 
The way that I do splatters is I just get some paint and just a lot of water. Just get a lot of water on there. And I usually take another paintbrush to use as my point of resistance. And I'm just gonna tap all over, get some nice splatters. Okay. If you find that the splatter isn't happening very well, just add a little bit more water to your paint. And it should come right off. I love a splatter technique, don't you? It's so fun. I'm running out of room on my table here. Does any other artists not have a lot of room in their studio? I mean, I'm lucky I have a table at all. Let's be honest. I used to create on the kitchen table, so <laughs> anything I have is a bonus. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Oh, big blop, that's okay. We don't mind the big blops either. Now, as you're doing something like this, you might wanna just give it a minute to dry. You know, I know this is kind of a quick, fun project, but like I said, you don't wanna make mud, so um, be cognizant of that. And it's at a point right now where I'm just gonna give it a minute. This is um, acrylic paint, so it dries really quickly, but there are spots here that I have some um, paint built up. You know, with the splatter, a large amount came off, and I wanna leave them that way because I think it looks really cool. So I'm gonna give it a minute to dry. So I like what's happening so far. And I'm gonna take, I have this really dry, um, very old bristly brush. Um, and I've tried to re-wet it. It's really not wetting. And you know what? This is the perfect type of brush to just kind of do a project like this. And I'm going to take this yellow that I don't use often. I'm going to take a little bit off. And I'm just going to do some hash marks. And you can see in some places it's blending with this blue because the blue wasn't totally dry and that is perfectly fine. Kind of like the idea though, now that I have the X's on there of doing kind of X and O. A little kiss and hug on the wrapping. So when you're distributing things like this, you know, I like to go off to the edge go as far down as you can and really distribute the color. Not to be perfect, because that doesn't exist and I don't like that look anyway. I'm just somebody that's never really gravitated toward that. But just, you know, so your eye has a place to travel around. got a bunch of X's and O's. I'm loving what the yellow has done here. Dig it. I'm loving that. So now I find when you're doing something like this, it's always great to take a different size paintbrush to do some more marks. And let's take that green because I haven't used it yet. And, you know, there's different things you can do. I have circles on here, so you could replicate that. I have the X's and O's, so you could replicate that. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is do some smaller X's and O's since I have that theme already going. And it will look, you know, um, different because it's a different colored and different type of paintbrush. However, it does complement the yellow, so. This is a real, this is a really pretty, um, you know, it looks just like regular green. What is this color? Olive green. Um, but I love it. It's like real green yellow. Really beautiful. Kind of reminds me of that green gold in fluid acrylics, if you've ever used that, the golden brand. I probably have it somewhere here. Green gold right there. Um, green gold is a really nice,
color because it's unexpected. It's bright and it's not like overwhelming and flows really nicely with different color palettes, I find. That's what I think. Okay, so we've got a few more. What I'm doing is just filling in where I feel like it needs a little bit of color or a little bit of design or something. You'll notice I'm not taking a lot of time on this. I'm not overthinking it. This isn't a project you really overthink. It's just a graffiti project. It's something that is gonna be wrapping. So, you know, it's something that you can have fun with and move quickly. And I find like the more that you move quickly, the more um, random and kind of interesting the marks all become. All right, let's see here. A couple more spots. Okay. Okay, next I have this tool. This is really for clay. Um, it leaves kind of a different design in there, but I love using it for paint. So, and I am very not, um, you know, I suppose you would have to put it on here and like paint it on here and use it properly, but I just kind of dip it right in the paint. Um, and what I'm doing is just getting, we'll get a little bit of that excess off, but I'm trying to just use, and I'm using the red, even though we've used it before, I like the idea of adding another layer to the red because it's so vibrant and fun. And I'm kind of just going along um, here and there randomly. And there's a lot of paint on here so I can go a couple times and leaving random marks. And they kind of complement those bubble wrap marks, I think different type of mark, same color. Excellent. So now I have, you know, a few colors left that I haven't used yet. Um, actually, I've used everything except these two, the teal and the black. Um, with the teal, and I'm going to use the black very last because I love using black at the end. So with the teal, I'm gonna take a filbert brush, kind of a bigger one, if you can see that. And I'm using this teal, and I'm just gonna make random marks like that, random. So this isn't, uh, you know, I'm not making an actual object. I'm just kind of looking to fill in wherever I feel. Like if there's a little bit of white, and the great part about this teal is the blue, the other layers that came through, it really still shows through. So I'm not covering anything up. This isn't a real opaque color. And I'm not putting it on very thick. I'm doing it very thinly. So again, I'm working very quickly. <clears throat> I'm not, this wouldn't be a design that I would sell. You know what I mean? Uh, this is not something I'm gonna make uh, fabric out of. You know, this isn't a pattern design. This is just something fun that I'm doing for, to wrap um, an original art piece and just give it some life, give it something fun. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Looking at that, just looking for spots, again, to distribute the color, not to make it even or perfect, whatever that is. Whatever perfect is, not looking for that at all. Um, looks like I need a little bit over here. And again, in some places, the paint's wet, so it kind of blends a little, and that is fine with me. I'm good with that. So I have a nice distribution of color. It looks crazy and wild, and I kind of love it. And now we've got the black. And there's two things I want to do with the black at the end. I want to do very much the same as we did with the blue in getting some splatter marks because I love using black for splatter marks. So I have this big round brush and I'm going to make the black real watery. OK, 
Okay, got my other paintbrush to use as resistance. And we're gonna do some more splatters. Get a little bit more water on there. Whoa, a big blob. I like to use black and white both at the end of a painting in general. Oops, <laughs> big blob. That's okay. Um, and I think that really helps balance everything out. Now we have a lot of white on here because it's on a white sheet, so I'm not adding additional white. Let's get some more water, a little bit more water. Um, but I like the use of black and what it does to kind of just help the other colors settle. Just a nice balance. Again, blop. All right, so we've got that. It does, you do make a little bit of a mess. We don't mind a mess though, right? Okay, so I have, um, I don't think I'm gonna use this paintbrush anymore, or actually it's filled up with paint. Why don't I do it? Why don't I just do it? Um, so what I'm gonna do instead is, uh, so I have these marks, which I kind of love because they're just random and like, they almost look like fingerprints. So I'm kind of just like looking to add these here and there. Different ways. Okay. Kind of fun me feel like finger painting days but with paintbrush loving the loving the addition of black on there really helps balance everything really like that and let's see this is pretty fun I don't know if I, I don't know if I can stop myself <laughs> Continuing to go. Okay, I think I'm good. Um, so, my dog's crying a little bit. Um, you okay, doggy? So I have this and I'm gonna just leave it dry and then I'm going to wrap up my original painting um, in this. So that'll give it a little bit more of personality and you know, a look of, um, you know, just kind of a fun look, I think. So I'm gonna let this dry. This is all dry now. And I love how it came out. I think it looks so cool. So now what I'm gonna do is wrap the art. So I'm gonna turn it over. And the opposite side is the smooth side that is the one that won't stick. So when I'm doing an art piece, um, and sending it off to somebody. First thing I do is just offer them a little thank you. So let me get my pen here. I'm gonna say thank you. And my name. Um, and this is just one of my postcards. So it'll have my website address on there so they can follow up if they have any questions so that'll go in there and this is one of my new triptychs so this actually stands like that and this is the finish side but this side also is done on the back because it's a triptych so it'll stand up so you'll see the back so what I want to do is place my postcard down put my art down and this, because it's a triptych that will fold over, of course my studio is a mess, it'll fold over so, you know, I want to make sure that as these edges fold in, this main image is protected. That's like the one of the most important things. So for this particular wrapping, I'm going to do something a little different than I normally do. I'm going to cut a piece. Okay, like that. 
move this to the middle. And I'm going to put the shiny side down over this because I want this to be totally covered. Now, if I put it against this, this edge is going to touch this. So I want to make sure that I have a, like a protection over the top too. So first thing, I want to make sure this is fitting properly. So I can either cut it or fold it. I'm going to cut it. So here's where the edge was and here, like if you see where it folds, that's where it folds. So we'll cut along that edge. Every time I wrap something, it's a different method. Now I'm the type of person, if I have a scrap like this, I save it. I put it in an art journal. I do something else with it. I mean, I really don't get rid of much. So anyway, I have this over the top. That's great. But now I'm gonna put the sides over because that way, when this folds over again, this is all protected because it's facing this. When I put the sides over, I wanna make sure that I have some room here too because when you fold it over, you need some room for that. So I have plenty of room on both sides. So I'm just gonna fold it over like this. So this meets, okay. And I'm going to fold it over so that way the internal pieces are all protected. They are all, look at that, how nice. They are all against that, that shiny piece that will protect it from, you know, getting wrecked. And I'm going to just fold it like this and kind of like a, kind of like a package. And I know it's not beautiful, but I do use masking tape <laughs> because that's what I do. And so this is the top part. So we'll make this go like this, like this. We just want to make sure it's secure. So when we give it to our buyer, that they know they're getting something that is wrapped in love that has been cared for. So this is very secure. Here's the back, here's the front. And then what I usually do is, because I love um, lace, I usually take a piece of lace because, I mean, I just, I love lace. And I wrap it around so that they have something extra that's pretty, that, you know, has a vintage feel. So it kind of, it goes with all the different textures that I like to create with. And I usually put a bow on there. And there you go. Nicely wrapped and all ready to give to the buyer.